Hello guys, my name is Kiki and in this video I am going to review this NDQB Cobra S1 combo. This is a new 3D printer on the market, it offers a lot of nice features, high speed printing and all this on a pretty reasonable price. Let's dive right into it. So, this printer was provided to me by Geek buying free of charge, but I am allowed to tell you my honest opinion. I'm not doing any reviews that are scripted. So you will really hear my honest opinion about this 3D printer. If you look at this printer from outside, it looks pretty much like a Bamboo Lab P1S or X1C printer. Basically, everyone on the market is trying to copy them at the moment. If you look at Elego, if you look at Creality, and then now also Anycubic. Honestly, I do not have any problem with this. As soon as it works and it can do whatever it promises that it's able to do. This is what we will figure out in this review now. So the printer itself is a 250 by 250 by 250 millimeter build volume Corex i 3D printer. It is promises speeds up to 600 millimeter per second with 20,000 meter per second square accelerations. Honestly, I would never really recommend these kind of speeds because the filament itself will not be able to cool down so quickly. So it's nice that the motion system itself is able to do this, but at the end during printing you will never really explore this. All the axes are equipped with linear rods. The hot end can go up to 320 degrees C. The heat bed can go up to 120 C. It comes with a spring steel sheet with a PEI coating on it. It's equipped with an auxiliary fan. There are all kinds of features like resonance compensation or calibration, AI spaghetti de detection with the help of the built-in camera, filament runout sensor, automatic bed leveling, and the list goes just on and on and on. A pretty nice feature is the nice colored 4.3 inch capacitive LCD screen. It's a touch screen. The next thing is the material changing system itself, the AnyCube Ace Pro. You can connect up to two of these to the printer at the same time, which means that you can put eight filaments and the printer will be able to handle this automatically. For sure you can use it for multi-material printing, but I really prefer using it uh, for supports. For example, if I print with PLA, I use PETG as support, or if I print something from PETG, then I use PLA as a support material because they do not stick to each other. So basically you can print, print with no gap in between the, the two layers, which is a pretty nice feature. One of the best option of this ACE system is that it's not only storing and managing your filaments, but it can also be used as a dryer, which is pretty nice. You can set in the slicer to for example, dry your filament for 5-6 hours and only start the printing process when it's finished. This is pretty cool. For sure, this can also be turned on during printing itself. In case of nylon, this is really ess essential to, to dry your filament also during the printing process itself. And with the Ace Pro, this is handled automatically. No need for another drying option. This is pretty cool. And other material changing system, systems, as far as I know, are not doing this at the moment. Okay, so now that I listed all the features of this printer, let's jump to my personal experience with this printer. I have to be honest with you, I have a Bamboo Lab P1S and that's what I'm using as a, as a reference for this printer. Although this printer basically offers in certain cases a little bit even more than the P1S because it has the nice touchscreen like the X1C for example and also the AMS system, the ACE Pro has this drying feature so basically it, it offers even more than the, the P1S itself and this costs significantly less than a Bamboo P1S. And my personal experience with this printer is absolutely positive. I have printed already if I just scroll through here, you can see that I made like 20-25 prints, also really long like color prints, later on I will jump on to this. And I did not have any failure, no failed prints whatsoever, which is pretty impressive. 
I printed with all kinds of filaments, PLA, PETG, ESA, carbon fiber filled PETG, and it all worked pretty well, with no issues whatsoever. I'm really, really happy with this printer up until now. For sure, I cannot talk about the longevity of this printer because I only have this since a couple of weeks and I used it for maybe 150 to 200 hours, but until now, no issues whatsoever. Okay, so let's just quickly jump over to the 3D prints I made with this printer. Okay, so the really first one was a Benchy. You must always print a Benchy with a new printer. <laughs> this is roughly an 18 minute Benchy and it turned out awesome. No issues whatsoever with 0.2 millimeter layer thickness and the PETG. By the way, all these prints you can see here are with PETG. In 99% of the cases I print with PETG, I have most of the colors with PETG, so I almost exclusively use PETG. This is why I tested basically almost everything with PETG here. I also made as a second print uh, like a torture test, an overhang test. These are like a 3D print test. Again with PETG, same color. As you can see, it turned out really, really well. So even like the 70, 80 degree section turned out pretty well with PETG when really the auxiliary fan is not turned on and so on and so on. All the bridging, everything turned out nice. I was pretty happy with this result. Then I made several functional parts. These are also with PETG. Look at this surface. It's really nice. It's again with 0.2 millimeter layer thickness. Le really, really nice layer lines. This is the bottom, the PEI sheet. And like this one, as I mentioned before, I really like printing with PETG with PLA support. This is the bottom section with zero distance, this also turned out nice, although there are these ni this, this tiny features here. They are dimensionally accurate. And just like this, this clamp fit, this screw, it works perfectly well. Like an RC car wheel, again printed with PLA support here in the middle. Pretty nice surface, also this, this inner section, I don't know how well the... Maybe you can see here, it turned out pretty nice. And then maybe the, the most impressive, I really wanted to test the, the AMS system itself. So I printed this little Dino, it's super cute, it's with three colors, again these all three colors are with PETG, so not PLA. So it's a lot harder to print with PETG like with PLA because you cannot cool it intensively like, like PLA. And look at this. I'm super happy with this. For sure the overhangs are not really nice because of the support, but there is no bleeding from the different colors like from the black. It turned out awesome. Some of these tiny things, these black nails are missing, but this is printed in the air on the tree support basically. So it's mostly only support setting and nothing else. I'm really, really impressed with this. In the, this print took roughly six and a, 16 and a half hours. There were over 340 filament changes. That's, that's pretty impressive. No, issue, no issues whatsoever with three materials either. Okay, then let's see how much poop it created. So, but it's no surprise, it's not the fault of the printer. Even the Bamboo Lab P1S or X1C printer with the AMS system will create the same amount of, of poop. Basically, that's, that's normal. 
but th just that's that's the amount which was created for this tiny print <laughs> but as i mentioned this is not the fault of the printer itself this is just the the disadvantage of this technology with the ams system itself okay now let's go to the conclusion So as I promised at the beginning, let me tell you my honest opinion about this printer. I'm still super satisfied with this printer. For the price, it's, it's, it's really an amazing tool. It's definitely comparable to my Bambula p s Okay, for sure, I do not have years and years of experience with this. I printed maybe 200 hours, but until now everything worked, worked well. No issues with, with the material changing system. Although in this multi-material print there were over 340 material changes and it, it did just fine, no issues whatsoever. <coughs> it's pretty fast, the quality, the print quality is nice. The build quality of the printer itself is, is also pretty reasonable, no issues whatsoever. It does not look like a cheap Chinese 3D printer. I would definitely recommend this 3D printer for everyone. For this price, Basically, it's super hard to beat, I would say, because it, it's significantly cheaper than the Bamboo Lab 3D printers, and, if, and it offers the same features like a p s or slightly even more than that. Let's talk also a little bit about negative things. There are only a few minor things, I would say, but I wanted to mention this uh, anyway. One of these is the slicer itself. And it could be created a new slice, a new slicer based on the Orca slicer system itself. It works pretty well, although when you go to the workspace basically, where you have the direct connection with the printer itself, sometimes data like temperatures are not coming back from the printer itself, or if you click on the camera, it, it does not always work. I would say most of the cases it does, but there were a few cases when it did not. It's not a big issue, the printer is doing what it's supposed to do, but it's just harder to follow it. The same is true for the mobile app itself. It has all the nice features, but sometimes like you cannot turn on the camera from the phone for, for whatever reason. It's just trying to load the camera and then you get a error code that, that uh, because of timeout you have to reload it again, things like this. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with the printer. I hope it will be reliable over the time and then I think then, then it's really a, a good buy. So as a final verdict, I would definitely recommend this machine to, to everyone who want to buy a cheap, affordable, but definitely capable machine. So you will be able to find a, a coupon code in the video description below. With the help of this, if you buy via my link with my coupon code, then you can buy a little bit cheaper this machine from Geek Buying. Okay guys, so that's all for this video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you like this video. If yes, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like the video. And I hope I see you next time. Bye.